Hello, and thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Jonathan, and in this talk, I will be presenting work Hannah, Edwin, and I did looking into an efficient method for incorporating the Defender into autonomous penetration testing. In this work, we are interested in network penetration testing, which aims to assess the security of a network by finding and exploiting vulnerability. For this task, the environment is a static computer network, and the agent needs to use its available tools to attempt to navigate through the network to reach its goal. In this example network, the goal is a set of documents located on a server in the data subnet. We can view penetration testing as a sequential decision problem. The agent has some set of tools and it must decide which tools to use and when. However, there is some uncertainty involved in its decision making. Specifically, there are three sources of uncertainty. The first is partial observability. Just as a poker player cannot see the cards in their opponent's hand directly, the pen tester may not have full knowledge of the network. The second is unreliable attack tools, resulting in uncertainty about the immediate outcome of a given action. The final source is the defender, specifically uncertainty from changes that the defender can make in the network that the pen tester cannot observe. Presently, there has been a lot of work into autonomous pen testing, generating a number of different approaches. However, none of the approaches so far handle all three sources of uncertainty present in pen testing. In this work, we build on earlier PombyP based pen testing approaches to produce a method that can handle all three sources of uncertainty. Firstly, a quick background on PombyPs. A PombyP, or Partially Observable Markov Decision Process, is a framework for modeling the interaction between an agent and its environment. At, at each time step, the agent performs an action and receives an observation and reward. The agent then uses the observation to update its current belief about the state of the environment and then uses its updated belief to choose its next action based on its policy. We model this agent environment interaction as a tuple which includes the state space S, the action space A, the observation space O, and the environment transition observation and reward dynamics denoted by T, Z, and R respectively, while gamma is the discount factor. The goal of the agent is to find a policy that maximizes its total expected reward. Before explaining the details of our approach, I want to first point out a key feature of the interaction between the pen tester and defender. That is, the pen tester and defender cannot observe each other or each other's actions directly. The presence of the other actor can only be inferred from observed changes in the network state. From the pen tester's point of view, the defender is some random process which detects and mitigates the pen tester's actions. Incorporating the full model of the defender into the pen tester model would be very difficult and result in an exponential increase in the size of the state space. Our proposed idea is to model the Defender as a Markovian Arrival Process, or MAP. MAPs allow us to model the expected time it takes for a process to arrive in some state. In our case, the expected time it takes for the Defender to detect and mitigate an attack. Additionally, as I will show, this can be done without increasing the size of the state space. For this work, we focus on the simplest MAP, the Bernoulli process, which can be de defined by a single parameter. We call this parameter the information decay factor and denote it D. Intuitively, the decay factor is the probability that the defender mitigates the pen tester's action. We assume the same Bernoulli process for each system property and that each system property is IID. A key advantage of using the Bernoulli process to model the Defender is the ease in which we can incorporate it into an existing PomDP model, requiring only a small modification to the transition function and requiring no changes to the state space. Specifically, given a value for the decay factor, we define a new model which we refer to as D-pen testing, which we define as follows. Firstly, let capital I be the set of state variables changed to observe by a given action. We then define the D pen testing transition function casewise for a given state variable. If the state variable is affected by the action, then the transition is unchanged from the original. Here we are assuming that the defender cannot respond to the pen tester's action immediately within the same time step. If the state variable is not affected by the action, then its value will transition to a mitigated value with probability D, distributed across the possible mitigated values. Otherwise, the state variable's value remains unchanged with probability 1 minus d. Key thing to note is that d pen testing requires that we know the value of the decay factor beforehand. 
To alleviate this limitation, we can learn the value of the decay factor online using Bayesian reinforcement learning. We call this new model LD pen testing and define it from the D pen testing model as follows. The action and observation spaces along with the discount factor are unchanged. For the state space, we add an extra variable capital D, which represents the possible values of the decay factor discretized to a resolution delta. This increases the size of the space space by one over delta fold. The observation and reward functions are not affected by the decay factor and so are the same as dpen testing, ignoring the decay factor variable. And lastly, the transition function is equal to the transition function of the dpen testing model with a matching value of the decay factor D. The capital delta here denotes the Kronecker delta identity function, which is one when D is equal to D prime, otherwise zero. Having now defined our two proposed models, we now move on to our experimental analysis. We tested our approach on two scenarios. The first scenario is shown in the top figure and involves a single server and low level actions. It extends the original POMDP pen testing scenario by incorporating a defender. The second scenario, which is shown by the bottom figure, is a high level scenario involving a two machine network. It extends the stochastic gain scenario proposed by Lai and Wing by incorporating partial observability. For our experiments, we did all planning using the SARSOP offline POMDP solver. Note that during planning, D pen testing and LD pen testing are given no knowledge of the defender. Following planning, we tested each policy generated against different defenders in simulation, where the pen tester and defender would alternate taking actions in the environment. Here we show the performance of POMDP pen testing, which does not incorporate any defender, the best D pen testing agent for the given defender, LD pen testing, which learns the defender model online, and Oracle pen testing, which is a strong pen tester that has knowledge of the POMDP defender's policy during planning and the defender's next move during simulation. The different defenders we tested against are shown along the x-axis, where the random defender selects a, a random action at each step while the POMDP defender uses a policy generated by solving the defender POMDP. We can see that both D pen testing and LD pen testing are comparable to the POMDP pen testing when there is no defender, while significantly outperform POMDP pen testing once a defender is introduced. This is because the original POMDP model is unable to adapt to changes made by the defender, while our models can. Comparing our approach with the strong Oracle pen testing model, we see that the Oracle model performs best against the POMDP defender while performing worse against the random defender. This highlights the generalization of our approach, which is not as optimal against a single defender type, but is more robust across defender types. Next, this graph shows the performance of D-pen testing for different values of the decay factor, which are shown along the x-axis. Note that when d equals zero, this corresponds to POMDP pen testing. From this graph, you can see that the performance of d pen testing is quite robust to the value of the decay factor, particularly for lower values. Given this robustness, why do we still need LD pen testing? To answer this question, we tested d pen testing and LD pen testing against random defenders whose behavior matches the Bernoulli model incorporated into the pen testers. The x-axis shows the decay value that the defender is matching, and the numbers at the end of each bar indicate the decay value used for the corresponding best or worst D-pen testing models. We can see that the performance of LD pen testing is close to the best D-pen testing agents across the range of defenders. When the defender's model is not known, LD pen testing allows us to still get good performance. Additionally, here we show LD pen testing with a uniform initial belief over the defender's models. It is trivial to incorporate knowledge of the offender into LD pen testing by modifying this initial belief. In closing, in this work, we presented an efficient abstract MAP model of the defender and showed how to incorporate it into existing POMDP pen testing models. This led to the creation of D pen testing and LD pen testing, which can handle all three sources of uncertainty present in pen testing. Thank you for listening and Please let me know if you have any questions.